Okay, so finally in part three of this tutorial series we will take care of our lightning because at the moment our lightning looks a little bit flat uh, because I'm just using uh, some simple HDI. So let me show you how the uh, light looks at the moment. So we can go into our shader editor and then we can switch this from object to world. And as you can see, uh, we have some simple HDI light uh, actually from Blender and it's driven by a mapping node. Um, so if we uh, isolate, for example, our footpath and switch into the viewport shading mode, we can disable our transparency so you can see what's going on. So as you can see, if I just rotate this on the Z axis, this is just a simple 360 HDRI, which is nice for pre-visualization. But uh, to get some cool looking light, we need to set up our own custom lights. Okay, so. As you can see in the background, the background image is a little bit lit and that's because even though it's a simple image texture, I uh, put this into the emission shader with a multiply node uh, so I can better control the density. And if I take this away, it's completely dark. And if I uh, change the emission value to something higher and it will multiply, uh, so I can uh, raise up the numbers down here then you can see that our image becomes a little bit brighter. And this way we can control our light or our environment a little bit uh, with the emission shader from the image. And uh, if we now take a look at our green screen footage, uh, you can see that the footage was lit uh, from above. I was indirectly putting some lights up the ceiling and they were bouncing off uh, back to the character. And this way I had this mood of a, of a higher light source which emulates the uh, moonlight of our scene. So we have to recreate that. But first off, let's uh, care a little bit more about the ambient light. At the moment, it's the background light. So if I turn this uh, way up to like three or maybe two, uh, you can see we get a little bit of uh, global illumination. And if I start to brighten up the color from a dark gray to a more whitish color, uh, actually I get the same result as I would get with the HDRI. So something around 1.5 is good to just light up the scene a little bit. So it's a little bit of a fake global illumination. And as you can see, I already prepared a volume scatter, uh, which is nothing else than fog inside of Blender. And if we now connect our volume to our volume socket in the world output, uh, we get a darker image because uh, at the moment we have no active light source. So even though if we crank this up to a value like 0.1, you can see <laughs> there's nothing happening. So let's uh, get our first uh, light, which will be our moonlight. And therefore we will use point light. So raise this one up to maybe like 5,000. Oh, uh, <laughs> so, uh, the reason why we don't see this is because it's behind our background. So let's put it in front. And ah, okay, now we can see something. And that will emulate our moonlight like we would have in our green screen setup. Maybe now our fog is a little bit dense, so let's bring this down to 0 0.07. Yeah, that's looking better. And now we have to adjust the position of our moon because it should be on the right side of our pest doctor. But now if you, if you look at this, our scene looks already better. Uh, so now it's just about fine tuning our environment light. So let's put this moonlight a little bit higher and put it onto the right side so that it matches with the green screen footage. And maybe we can bring this down from 5000 to 2500, something like that. So we get this nice fall off of light. And as you can see, the fog is spreading the light very nicely and evenly. So fog is always a good element to get some cinematic feel to the scene. And um, now we need to enhance this light a little bit. And therefore we will use another light. We can take our 3D cursor and put the cursor to the world origin. And then we can hit the Shift A shortcut to create a new element. And we will go for an area light. Okay. And now we have our area light inside of the scene. Uh, so we need to adjust this so that it enhances the look. And the difference between a point light and a area light is that the point light is really like all over the place. So it's spitting the light 360 degree while uh, an area light is a little bit more directional or a little bit like a spot. And this is better to control. Uh, we can get rid of the point light for a second. And now we can take our area light 
and move it back into position. And we can right click and adjust the power and the size. So maybe let's make this one a little bit bigger so that the light source is becoming a little bit softer. And now we can once again right click and adjust the power and then just play around with uh, the settings by moving the mouse up and down. I mean, you can do this also in the power section, it's up to you. Sometimes it feels a little bit more intuitive to do it this way. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So we give a little bit of highlight to the different assets on the right side, because this is where our moon should come from. And this is the way that things can be lit in film sets. So you have like one practical light, which in this case is the moon. And this one will be enhanced by artificial film lights to uh, mimic that uh, the light source is even brighter than it originally is. And this way we can set up some nice highlights on our 3D objects. And more importantly, uh, let's raise up our background. So as you can see at the moment, uh, we don't see the image anymore because of the fog. Uh, so we have to raise up our emission and boost up the numbers until you see the, the horizon of our background again, something like that. So we have this nice transition of the clouds. And yeah, this is starting to look a little bit better. Maybe we can add in one more area light. So let's go back and do 3D viewport. And let's uh, duplicate our light. Rotate this on the z-axis and bring it uh, in front of our camera. Uh, so we have a little bit of a light up here as well. So we can see a little bit better the tombstone at the very beginning. And maybe we can bring down the moon a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and now we can animate our existing lights within the scene. Uh, first of all, we have to create a point light for our lamp that our pest doctor is holding in his hand. And for this one, we can once again bring our cursor to the world origin and hit the shortcut uh, Shift A to create a new point light. And we can bring our light in position. So our pest doctor is a little bit in the back of our camera. So let's move it on the Y axis and just try to match it slightly with the footage. And then we will animate the position of this point light. And this way we will emulate the uh, light of the lamp, which is of course not there in 3D space yet. But we try to change that. So let's click on the auto keying down there. And uh, let's go through the timeline. Maybe we can start a little bit more here. And this is our first keyframe. And when the doctor starts to move, the lamp will follow. So somewhere here. So let's bring it slightly to the side and a little bit to the front because he's moving forward. And maybe a little bit up. Okay. And then let's see what the interpolation does between these two keyframes. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit too slow, so we have to adjust that. So move it along on the x-axis and a little bit up. And then we can follow along. So once again, adjust the keyframes where needed. And that starts to look good. Okay. Go a little bit forward. Bring the light a little bit forward too. And adjust the position once again. So it's, it's pretty simple and we just have to do like maybe 10 to 12 keyframes. Not too much. So we can hand animate this one. Uh, I mean, you could track this one in After Effects later on and uh, try to, for example, get an uh, optical flare or something like that. But I'd like to have at least a little bit of illumination on the, on the floor, on the ground. And this way, uh, I think this uh, is necessary. And furthermore, uh, we can see our point light a little bit in the fog. Uh, so this way we can uh, actually fake a little bit of interaction with the lamp and the fog. Uh, so I think this is necessary. And so uh, once again, this is kind of like one of the secret ingredients to good looking green screen footage. If you try to match uh, the color and the tone and the light of your 3D environment in this case and match it to your live action footage, it really feels much more integrated. So this is really cool. And as you can see, uh, I mean, we will animate the path to the end. Uh, now our lightning strike comes into place too. Uh, so we have to animate this one too. So our whole cemetery needs to be lit up when the light strikes the pest doctor. But uh, until there, let's uh, continue our animation and really make sure that the point light is following as best as possible. 
And at the very end, it's uh, even though he's holding the lamp more or less still, at least give it a little bit of movement because uh, it's it's pretty hard to to hold a, a lamp without moving. So this little jittery movement will give you a little bit more of a realistic result. Okay, so let's turn off our pest doctor to see our result, and let's go through the timeline. I mean, it's a little bit of a flickering, but that's because of the viewport shading in Eevee later on when we render this. It will be a constant light source, and I think it's just a little bit, but it will do the job. And I think that looks pretty good. Cool. Okay, and now comes our second very important light, and that of course is our lightning strike. You see it somewhere around here at frame 122. Uh, we need to have this second light, and we will take our area light that we've copied before, and we will call this lightning. And then we will grace this up to maybe like 3000. Okay, that's a little bit too much. Maybe 2000 is fine. Yeah, maybe something like that. So this is the power of our strike. And we can start animating our power. So let's start with the first strike somewhere at around 128. And if we go back a little bit, you can see that our pest doctor is here in complete dark, so we have to change that to zero. Uh, and if you are uh, enable auto keying, we just don't have to do this every time. So let's see. And with our lightning strike that continues until this point. So we can copy our zero position and paste it. Oh, maybe we need to uh, hold the light for a second. So as you can see here, it gets pretty bright until here. And maybe we have to copy our, our power on 2000. So maybe we can raise this up even to 2000, I don't know, 200 or something. So sometimes a lightning strike builds up. So we have to mimic that light. Uh, maybe something like that. And then we can go on with the next strike. That would be here. So we can copy and paste our 2000 watt keyframe. Maybe we can raise up our light a little bit. So it, uh, the light source is coming more from, from above. And maybe we can rotate it a little bit more into the scene so that the cemetery is fully covered with this lightning strike. Yeah, I think that looks better. And then we just really have to be very precise with this. So whenever there is a, a strike, we have to put up the keyframes up to 2000. And when there is no strike, we have to bring it back to zero. And actually the, the preset of this uh, light, I think I was using a Sokani light with some sort of uh, softbox, uh, was uh, <laughs> pretty dense. So uh, I think it was a frequency of eight or so. So there are a lot of strikes coming in a very short period of time. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. We have to uh, recreate that. So it's a little bit of an annoying task, but at the very end, it will just sell out because that will look pretty cool. Trust me. I will speed this up a little bit because at this stage, we are just copying uh, the keyframes from zero to 2000 and back uh, just to just get the flicker of our light. And then we will meet again when you are finished. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, here's our pest doctor and the light hits the scenery. And you can see it already, even though this is just a preview window in Blender, but it really feels much better. We really, really feel the interaction between our live footage and our 3D environment in Blender. And really, this is without compositing, uh, so really it looks good. Maybe we can do one more light uh, that is coming a little bit from this side. Uh, I accidentally reused the light that we've uh, duplicated before and to change it to a lightning strike. And I think if we just lighten up the scene a little bit here, uh, I think that will look better. So let's uh, quickly rotate this on the Z axis and move it into position so that the side of our mausoleum is a little bit yeah, softer in the lightning. And uh, we have a little bit more light going on there. And I think that will look a little bit better. Maybe it's not the most realistic light because uh, our main source comes from uh, the back. But yeah, sometimes you just have to break the rule. And I think this will be pretty forgiven.
Okay, and the last step before we go back into After Effects is we need to animate our depth of field. So at the moment everything is, you know, sharp and this is not very cinematic because we don't shoot this with a smartphone, we shoot this with a film camera, so to say. And the idea is that we have a transition from our uh, tombstone here at the very front and then we will shift focus to our pest doctor. And in Blender it's pretty easy to do. Uh, so first off, let's dial in our focus depth and for that we can pick whip our depth object. Uh, so we can use this uh, pipette at the very right. And we can select our tombstone. And then we can play around with the f-stop and the lower the number, the more uh, shallow depth of field we will have, uh, if this makes any sense. So let's bring down the number, uh, like with a real aperture. Uh, so the more light we get through our lens, uh, the bigger or greater the depth of field will be. So maybe we can do like 0 0.9 or maybe 1, depending on the shot. But I think that looks good. Just eyeballed it. And yeah, okay. But we cannot animate this one uh, because we have to do it manually with the focus distance. So let's click away that and bring our focus distance into place until we get the sharp point of our tombstone. And then we can maybe at the focal distance of 1.5, uh, we can start the animation and when the camera transitions from the left to the right. So it's a sweet spot between shifting the focus but still having our background still not pretty sharp because uh, our pest doctor is in the midground. Uh, so you really have to dial in your values a little bit so that the sharpness from the tombstone is clearly away but the midground is being sharp and the background is still being a little bit blurred out. So it's a little bit of a back and forth, just play around with the numbers until you get a nice result. And this is the only thing that we cannot really measure in uh, Blender. I mean, we could use up some sort of um, a scale model uh, just as a, as a stand-in, so to say. But let's do it quick and dirty with a little bit of eyeballing. Uh, so find a sweet spot in the midground, somewhere at maybe 3.3 meters, and then we are good to go. Okay, so let's uh, see the animation. So when our camera moves over, the focus shifts from our tombstone to our pest doctor, and that's what we want. Okay, so maybe uh, we give it a go and we will render this out, and then we will check this in After Effects to see whether we did a good job or not. Okay, cool. So the render settings are pretty easy. Uh, so as you can see, we are in Eevee and we can leave the default settings. So render of 64 is okay. I mean, you can crank it up, but I'm not pretty sure whether you will get a better result. Uh, of course, ambient occlusion, which is on by default, we can raise this up a little bit and we can add in some bloom for the lights and we can add in some screen space reflections. Uh, we can use refraction and we could bring up the trace precision and the maximum roughness. And then we can uh, go into volumetric lightning, for example. You can uh, change the tiling size to 16, for example. And I think that's everything we need to cover. I mean, in the output settings, of course, full HD, the frame rate of our camera, then the frames, and then we uh, go into output. We are going for a PNG sequence with 16-bit uh, RGB or RGBA. Doesn't matter in this case, uh, because we don't have any transparency. Uh, you can bring down the compression, but you don't have to. And I think then we're good to go. Uh, so yeah, if we uh, have found our background render, for example. Okay, and we could do that, except, and then we could start render the animation and then wait for it in After Effects. And we will see us in part four of this tutorial series. See you there.